In 2024, citizens of the Russian Federation financed the armed forces of Ukraine through call centers in the amount exceeding $1 billion. This was reported by the deputy chairman of the board of Spurbank of the Russian Federation, Stanislav Kuznetsov. According to him, at the moment, telephone scammers have been able to withdraw or steal about 250 billion rubles from Russians, and if this trend continues, this figure could reach 300 billion by the end of 2024. The vast majority of this money goes to the same call centers that operate against Russians. About 20% of these funds go to pay the salaries of the callers. Another 20% is the net profit of the owner of this call center. Another 15 to 20% goes to the so-called roof, the local police, various bandits who protect them. And no less than 40% goes to finance the armed forces of Ukraine. Therefore, our knowledge of the peculiarities of telephone scammers' schemes, the level of our cyber literacy today is also a contribution to preventing the financing of the armed forces of Ukraine, the Russian banker said. Suburbank has created an open library of knowledge on cybersecurity, Cybrarium, to improve digital and financial literacy where you can learn about popular scenarios used by scammers. About three quarters of scammers use one of five words when making phone calls. Either it is the Ministry of Internal Affairs, the FSB, the Central Bank, or it is a secure account. Or the fifth is to provide the code from the SMS, then we will save your money. Yes. And if any of our citizens hears one of these five words in a phone call from an unknown number, feel free to end the conversation. The most common fraudulent schemes are calls from law enforcement officers and the Bank of Russia with the need to transfer money to the supposedly safe account. Kuznetsov gave advice on counteracting scammers. Four people were wounded at a subway station in New York City's Brooklyn borough on Sunday when police officers shot a man threatening them with a knife and inadvertently sprayed bullets that hit passengers, authorities said. The people struck by gunfire included two innocent bystanders, one of the officers and the man with the blade, who the police initially confronted because he hadn't paid his fare, officials said. One of the passengers, a 49-year-old man, was hospitalized in critical condition after a bullet passed into an adjoining subway car and struck his head. A video posted by a passenger showed upset passengers fleeing, police running to help the injured and the wounded officer suddenly realizing he had also been struck by a bullet. Interim Police Commissioner Thomas Donlan, who was only appointed to his position Friday, promised a thorough investigation, but cast blame for the incident on the man accused of brandishing the knife. So did Metropolitan Transit Authority CEO John Olieber. We bless the officers and the mayor and the police and the NYPD who puts people out there to make sure that people who get on the transit system do not have to encounter people with weapons. In this case, that's what those officers were doing. They were trying to prevent somebody who had a weapon from getting on a train. And terrible things occurred, Lieber said. The shooting happened when two officers followed a man up the station steps to an elevated platform after seeing him enter without paying, Chief of Department Jeffrey Madry said. They followed him onto a train that had pulled into the station and fired two tasers, but neither incapacitated the man, Madry said. Madry said the man was advancing on the officers with the knife when both officers fired multiple rounds. The 37-year-old man was hit several times. He was hospitalized in stable condition. The video taken by a passenger shows the officers rendering first aid, before one of them realized that he, too, had been hit by a bullet. Besides the passenger struck in the head, a 26-year-old woman suffered a graze wound. The wounded police officer had a bullet enter his torso under his armpit and lodge in his back but was expected to make a full recovery. Mayor Eric Adams, a Democrat, visited the wounded officer in the hospital Sunday. First of all, uh, thank God our officers are, are okay, and uh, clearly they averted an even greater tra tragedy with a person with over 20 arrests. <coughs> Uh, a real career criminal 
Uh, we have uh, four people uh, that were shot, and we're able to have a real account of what's uh, actually occurred uh, due to what I believe is the uh, partnership with the TA and the police department. We have a number of cameras that not only on the train, but on the platform, as well as the body-worn cameras of our offices.